All right. So uh, I'm a teenage atheist in a Christian household. Ooh. And I just recently started to doubt my beliefs. My life, there's no good evidence for a God okay. that I could find. So, okay, so my question is kind of off that topic a little bit. So where would you start when pointing out flaws in Christianity specifically? Ooh. Okay, so first of all, do you, does your family know what's going on? No. Do you want your family to know what's going on? No. Okay, no. so can I ask, what is this question for? Um, just, you know, it's kind of for me, but it's also for people who might ask questions about my beliefs. Okay, so right now what you're basically saying is that you don't have a belief, right? Oh, I have, oh, I have, I have beliefs. I'm, well, no, I but I mean, as right far now. as Christianity, you don't have like a belief in, in this religion as being true or correct right. in, in what it's claiming. Correct. Okay, and so yeah. what you're kind of, you're, I'm going to give you some advice that a, an, a preacher gave me one time who right. I was going to go in and speak to another preacher and defend my beliefs or my lack of beliefs. And uh, one of the things I was told before I walked in by another, by a third party preacher was, just remember you don't have to defend anything because you're not the one making the claims. Right. And that mm -hmm. was very important to me because the other person is the one making claims and the other person is the one that's got something to defend, right? As long as you're just saying, I, because what you said at the beginning of the call is you looked and you couldn't find sufficient evidence to support what you could call Correct. belief. And so you're not right. making a claim. You're not saying there's no God. You're saying if there is a God, I just don't see the evidence that's convincing me right. of it. So when someone comes to you and starts to make these Christian claims, you're not in any position to have to defend, right? You're in a position where right. they're claiming things and all you have to do is say, well, based on what? Like, where are you getting this information? And, and you just, all you can do is look at what they claim, go look it up, go look up the, the, what they're claiming, look up the crit critiques of what they're claiming, and then see what makes most sense to you. Do you think the critiques are valid or do you think that they're unfair? Do you think that what they're claiming, and sometimes, sometimes they can make a claim that's correct, right? Like somebody called earlier to say that the Bible says that, the, that a constellation is bound together, and he's like, and it is by gravity, oh, yeah. right? And it's like, well, sure, it's yeah. bound by gravity, but you, know, you see the stars all clustered together, so I mean, it's like saying I'm bound to the earth by, you know, something. Um, well, sure, I see that. So it's not that there's a lot of claims in the Bible that are not incorrect because they are actually things that people witnessed and, and observed, and they are correct. But I had somebody the other day post, for example, this, this description of something that happened with Moses, like why he saw a burning bush, and they were jumping through hoops to explain, like, how a person could think they were talking to a burning bush, like from a really purely scientific, you know, perspective. And I wrote back and I said, you know, Moses is a myth, right? <laughs> we don't really have to explain how he talked to a burning bush because right. there's no reason to believe Moses existed. And so when I you... I mean, like... Go ahead. Okay. No, please go ahead. Uh, so like Noah's Ark and stuff like that, like mm -hmm. we were talking about that today in my church, Noah's okay. Ark. Mm -hmm. There's like... And I just realized that there's no... No scientists seem to realize that there was a global flood like 4,000 years ago. Right, you're it's right. It's not something that's commonly understood. Yeah, it's funny how all the geologists and all, you know, like everybody that has anything to do with this, it basically says we don't, they're not, they're not postulating a global flood. And it was funny, we had a caller the other day that I just said, okay, well, I'll just give it to you because so we can move on with the conversation. But he was saying that people were asking him, well, what happened to all the water? Like, where'd the water go? Right? And it's like, that's actually a very good question. Yeah. What happened to all the water? Where did it, wouldn't it just, if the planet was covered in water, where did it go? <laughs> so, I mean, there should be some sort of geological evidence if there was such a large scale yeah. flood and you'd be able to see it in the rock layers. What you're going to find out yep. is that they seem to have no beef with anything in science except those aspects of science that don't back up what they're claiming. And suddenly they have all kinds of problems with science and it becomes a giant God-hating conspiracy uh, of, of, you know, atheist scientists who don't believe the Bible and they were not going to accept God. And what's really interesting is that a lot of these scientists are believers. 
right? So a lot of the scientists yeah. involved in this, this atheist conspiracy to disprove God and the Bible um, believe in God. Right, Francis Collins was uh, works with genes. Right? He's a genetic genetic scientist, and he's actually made comments about how you basically just from genes alone you can see the evidence of evolution in a way that makes it impossible to to deny. And this is a man who believes like Trinity Christianity, right? I mean, this is like a hardcore Christian Christian. This isn't just like a <laughs> deist. So. It's, uh, it's kind of amazing how they only seem to have issues with the science that is not biblically supported. That's where they kind of go deep. Yeah. Okay, so you would say like the biggest flaw with religion in general is just the burden of proof, basically. You can't say that, you can't say that, basically someone's making the claim they have to back it up, and if well, you, sure. they don't, you, don't, you don't have enough evidence, then... You don't have to. Yeah, when you basically. when you have to start saying that science is a conspiracy in order to support your position, that and this is what happens a lot of times. They'll say, "Oh, Jesus existed," and there, you know. And I know that this is a controversial thing. That there are some a lot of people that are like, hey, "Jesus didn't exist. There was no Jesus. There was this." You know, there's there's a lot of different perspectives on it. But let's just say, for the sake of argument, that there is this mythical guy at the core of of the religious leader myth, right, of, of the, the miraculous yeah. Jesus. So if you have that, what they'll do is they'll pull out every biblical scholar that says, that has, that has requisite credentials that says Jesus existed as, you know, what, there is a historic Jesus. The moment you point out that those same scholars assert that he was very different and not the son of God as the Bible Jesus, mm -hmm. suddenly they start disputing. Okay, yeah. so a minute ago it was, you can't just throw away all the work of these scholars and just take your, you know, like the mythicists who are the minority and, you know, and go with that just because it doesn't fit your narrative. But the moment the, the majority of scholarship doesn't fit their narrative, they do exactly that. Mm -hmm. The same scholars they are accepting who are saying, yeah, there was a historic Jesus are the same scholars who say this, this yeah, and it wasn't a miraculous son of God. And yet they reject them when, as soon as you hit that point. Okay, so how about this then? So are there any flaws in like Christian logic? So when someone's trying to prove <laughs> oh, you, how man. much time do you have? Yeah. So like, what are those main ones that you can point out? So that's really the question that I'm getting at. You might want to look up like, just some... fallacies in general, uh, right? I mean, how, right. recognizing that because there's all kinds of you know there's arguments from popularity. Well, lots of people. You know, and the arguments for popularity are especially weird because those are just claims, right? So you have a writer who wasn't even there who's claiming that there was like 500 people that witnessed this thing and they all went and said this thing. And there's really no, it's just a story of a story of a story that he's writing down. And yet it becomes, well, this guy is claiming that he heard that there were all these people that saw this thing and then went and told other people. And so, how all those people can be wrong. And so it's like, it's an argument from popularity where you don't even know that you had a popular mm -hmm. population that even ever did this or said it or believed it. And then another one is ad antiquatum. It's because it's really, really old. It stood the test of time. And, it's, and what's hilarious is that you'll have people that, uh, it, that they'll turn their nose at the fact that there are older manuscripts than the Bible that have fiction written on them. And oh, of course, those are really old stories, but the Bible, yeah. Stood the test of time. It's I would read some. There's Bart. Bart Ehrman has a book out called Misquoting Jesus, where he just goes through what he learned in, you know, basically, I don't know if it was seminary or Bible college, whatever you call it, where he was studying, you know, manuscripts uh, that the Bible is based on, like the, the Greek manuscripts. And he writes about his experience and how he came to change his perspective from a uh, very conservative, you know, young, I don't know if it was a young earth creationist, but very, very literalist uh, Bible student um, to actually become far more open-minded and realize that, hey, these books aren't what I was raised to believe they were. And he's a very readable author. If you just want to see, like, what's really going on with the Bible, that to me is very, very impactive. Also, if you want to focus just on Jesus, um, David Fitzgerald's written a couple of really good books. Um, if you want to start with uh, Nailed, 10 Christian myths that prove that Jesus never existed at all. That's a fun read. Um, hopefully it'll help. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Appreciate yeah, sure. it. No problem. 
All right, well, good luck with that. And, you know, <laughs> it can be tough in your situation, but the good news is you sound like you're like an older teen, so maybe you'll be out of the house soon. Uh, I'm actually 15 right now. All right, so you got a couple years. Oh, man, I was a believer. Yeah. It'll go quick. Man. <laughs> It'll go quick. Okay, thank you so much. All right, thank you. Really appreciate it. All right, bye-bye. Take care. Man, All my right. head was so far up my own keister when I was 15. All righty, so. Anyway.